when Jesus was talking to them, they said, yeah, Peter, Peter, Peter the sorcerer, he wants to buy these gifts that we have. And, of course, Jesus said he can't buy these gifts. Now, what happened is when you're born, as soon as you're born, you have these gifts. You don't need to read any book. You don't need to be led by any man. You don't even need to be duped or told any kind of stuff. You have these natural gifts, and you remember these gifts as soon as you're born. Some people remember the gifts while they're in the womb. Some of them remember the gifts as soon as they come out of the womb. But as soon as you go to school, this is the problem. When you get to school, that is where you're corrupted. When you go to school, it's just like someone in the military going to boot camp. What happens is they break down all your natural gifted programs that are, that you have come into the world with. You know who God is. You know all the magnificent gifts that you have. You know what telepathy is. You know everything. But when you get to school, they deprogram you. They break down all the programs that are naturally part of your DNA. And they instill their own programs in you and make you a robot. You become robotic, almost like a, a, a foolish scholar, like a fool, you know, because you know all this, these programs and these books. They're nothing but programs. They're there to keep you programmed and keep you going in a robotic state of what they want you to know. In other words, a man owns the media, so therefore... You have to think what he tells you to think, buy what he tells you to buy, wear what he tells you to wear, and think about what he's like. He's got these billboards and magazines and newspapers because what is the beast, the devil, the evil? He's the prince of the airwaves. And what is the airwaves? The airwaves is the media, magazine, newspaper, radio, television. So, But it's owned by the devil, the evil, the man. A man is the one who owns it, so therefore he's programming you. You are watching programs. You are creating programs. You are taught when you go to school to read a program. That is what you're being geared for, is a program. So now when you come out of there, you don't retain your natural gift. This is why uh, Bill Gates and a lot of them, was Ellison and them, was talking about they dropped out of school. They were talking about when you drop out of school, and, of course, I didn't do high school because I took the regions, the New York regions, scored high and went into college. So I didn't even get those programs that they give you in high school because the last programs, I think, are the most worst ones. Uh, because you can kind of drop out of school and some of the programs will fall back to the wayside and you can go back to being natural again because going back out on the streets again make you access your own DNA. But when you go through the 12 years of the programs, this is why Bill Gates and Ellison and them was all bragging that they became billionaires and they were all dropouts. They were bragging about being dropouts because they didn't get the programs. But you guys missed that whole point for some reason. Y'all didn't really get that point. But that's what they were talking about <laughs> without telling you guys. <laughs> you know, that's a real statement. I like that you even brought that up because coming up, I used to always tell people, like, sometimes you got to look at the system, break it down. I was like, why do you think they go hard, you know, with a truancy officer? I was like, you have to get to school. You have to get this programming. And you, you mentioned a point about how, like, you know, when they come into the public schools, how that's where the programming is initiated. I can even take it a step further. You know, they play with the eugenics and the chemical warfare. And even in the womb, sometimes they can shoot the mother up or as soon as the baby come into existence, it come the needles, you know, break down that DNA structure to make the even brain waves exert their programming more easily and, and take on that robotic form and it's it's ridiculous but you know that is something all in itself you know and it's a, it's a deep process it's deep and it goes on and on and on and more people need to wake up you know to that they really do yeah, because 
Yeah, because when you look at the military, because that's all it's doing is deprogramming you. Military is deprogramming you and installing their own program because when you full camp, they can't utilize the program that you have coming from the streets. They cannot utilize that program, so they have to deprogram you and then put in their own program so you can be a robot or a robotic to their, or a zombie to their program. That's why you see a lot of vets. They're no good. They're useless mercenaries. They don't, don't use them anymore because a lot of them was just like the Manchurian candidate. It was trained to be killers, assassins. And then they don't have no, no role, no point, no life. Because after it's over, you're older now, and then you're has been, but now, you you know, what do you do? And then that's why a lot of time the government picks them back up and utilizes them for certain jobs and everything because you got to realize they're trained to live off the land. You know, look at that Rambo stuff, and they're trained to kill, and they're, like, caught in that cycle of program. you got to almost come and bring someone to deprogram to stop them from killing and doing other things. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to realize that these programs just – go on. They don't care about what happens to the person. The program is still going on. And a lot of the serial killers that you see here or that we got running rampant are these trained assassins. John Lee Malvo. John Lee Malvo, um, one of the D.C. snipers, is ex-military. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, but they don't explain this to people. They don't explain this to you. They don't tell people that these people have been programmed and they can't stop the programs, is once you program people to do things, they they become like automatic, automated, you know, like just robots. Machines. They also speak to you about that. You know what I'm saying? Indeed. Absolutely. Indeed. You want to expand okay. on that, Ed? Go ahead and introduce yourself, Ed. Yeah, go ahead, Ed. Yeah, Ed. Yeah, Ed is, uh, let me let me explain to people who he is. Excuse me, Ed Small is the one on my on the website, my website, truthaboutmatrix.com, truthaboutmatrix.com, and you can go on there and buy my book and uh, the CD where you can hear live from me speaking. He's the one that made the 1 minute and 45, uh, 1 minute and 45 seconds documentary explaining what was pilfered from my, my protective expression. Thank you, Sophia. And then I'm gonna let him go. I'm gonna let him go on and, and talk to you from there. Go ahead, Ed. Thank you, Sophia. It's, a, it's great to be here uh, with you, IC Justice, and your audience. And I just wanted to add to the great exchange that you guys were having uh, relative to a movie that I think will um, explain it quite well. And it actually has one of the most prominent actors in the Western world. Uh, in it, and of course, and the only reason I'm bringing that up is is that it's it's important to note when the best actors are used in certain films. And this film is called Suspect Zero. In fact, Carrie Ann Moss from The Matrix is in it as well. And it is about uh, program killers, and I won't give it away, but it's about um, program killers used by the government. Um, you guys can get on Google, type in MK Ultra. Get in Google, type in um, the Stanford Research Institute. And, and, and in any event, the movie goes into detail about um, how these killers are made by the government. And, of course, as Ms. Stewart alluded, when they teach these people how to do these heinous acts, they do not train them how to turn it off. And um, this is uh, sometimes what we see with serial killer cases and uh, other serial crimes you know, here on our home soil. You're just looking like, as um, the, the lady pointed out, it's exactly right. There yeah, but Ed, well, why don't you tell them about how I was prophesizing this in 81 in the book, Computerized Warfare, that they, they were going to teach them and use these programs to teach them in the future, which is going on now. Explain that to them. This is, this is something that um, I find very valuable, valuable excuse me, in the book. The, um, the book was actually written, and this is what I had to remind myself when I got a copy. Um, when I was reading it, of course, it being phenomenal, you know, I get to the end of the book, and I, you know, of course, wow, but I come to the realization that 
I just read something that was actually written 30 years ago. And some of the things that um, jumped out at me, and, you know, I'm not that old. I still play PlayStation 3. I still have PlayStation 2. I got an Nintendo Wii. I still play video games. <laughs> um, so I, I watch certain things. I'm uh, aware of certain things. In, Ms. Stewart's, in the third eye, Ms. Stewart's book, the one thing that, that I almost dropped the book when I read it, page, uh, I think it's page 31, but what it says, in fact, it's okay if I read the excerpt right from the book, Sophia, is that okay? Yeah, that would be great. Yes, read it for people. Okay, I'll read it right from the book. All right, so this is page, this is the third eye, this is page 30. Okay. Men of Earth's largest bank institutions and corporations secretly banded together in a final effort to maintain the worship of money as a permanent way of life. By controlling the mass media, television, newspapers, radio, print, the secret organization with the code name Rothschilds can go on Earth to reveal their weapon systems as a primary means of providing money and jobs. Computer games such as Tron, Space Commander, the Threat Pac-Man replaced Monopoly, and other home games in the last part of the 20th century. The games were a scheme of the Rothschilds with the aid of President Sam Men to secretly prepare young boys and girls for nuclear wars by programming their minds to handle computerized warfare. Such preparation would be useful once the draft was brought